another Try This, where we dive into a section of the library and we try something new. So today we are in the 745s, we're playing with paper today. So I'm Leslie and this is Shannon, we're from the Ingersoll Library and today we are going to have a look at paper mache. We're going to try a little bit of mod podging, if you've never mod podged before, and uh, beginner origami with napkins. Very beginner. <laughs> All right, well we have a lot to dive into and play with today. What should we start with? I say we start with our Mod Podge. Ah, my favorite. Right. Let's go. All right, so Mod Podge. I am very excited about using the Mod Podge. I know you, some of you might be well versed in Mod Podge or like decoupage and things like that, but we're gonna, we're gonna try it out. Yes. So this book here is called Mod Podge Rocks. Decoupage Your World by Amy Anderson. And it is an adult nonfiction book, but it is full of 40 plus projects that you can do with Mod Podge, and they're really cool. So there's a whole section on Mod Podging fabric and making, um, this one's a lampshade. There's make your own jewelry in here, how to add some pizzazz to your plastic chairs at home. So this is a really, really cool book if you have Mod Podge and you want to try this. So back when we were doing Crafty Night out in the library, we did a program where we made bookmarks and we did Mod Podge those as well. Uh, so these are made with the, they were cut out with the Cricut machine that we have here at the library and then we just glued everything together and Mod Podge over it. So that's, I think about the gist of our Mod Podging <laughs> skills right now, but we're going to try this and try something new. Um, so we have this giant bottle of Mod Podge, it says you always have to keep it at room temperature. And once you put it on, it does say it takes four weeks for it to actually cure. Wow. So, I mean, it does dry fairly quickly, but for it to actually be fully cured, it does say on the bottle that it's four weeks. Okay, a lengthy project. Yeah. Okay, long-term Mod Podge project. <laughs> but these did dry really quickly. We Maybe. did this in an afternoon, and they dried really hard. And we used, they look like a gloss finish, so they're a little bit shiny. Yeah. And we didn't seal them with anything. And that's what this one is too, is the gloss finish Mod Podge. There are many different types of Mod Podge available. There's the matte finish and there's different types for different projects. So depending on what you're doing, you might want to look into what type of Mod Podge you actually need. So what are we Mod Podging? Well, <laughs> from this book, we love the fabric and the stickers and all the really cool stuff you can do. But we're going to try our hand at a photo Mod Podge. So it says that you can print off a photo and you can Mod Podge it to any sort of surface. So we have a lovely photo that we took with our Try This set up over there <laughs> and a piece of wood and we're going to try it out. I want to see how this works. And we printed, this is not photo paper, this is just regular paper. So it says it should work no problem. So All right. let's give it a whirl. Let's get started. So it says to apply a thin layer on both sides of your picture. So I guess we're not putting any directly on the wood. We're going to put it on the photo first. So make sure that you have protected your workspace always because this is uh, even tackier than glue. It works similar to glue, but it's definitely thicker and uh, it gets on everything. So <laughs> protect your workspace always. So we will start. I'm wondering if just putting a little bit on this brush and then you can yeah, spread it out. Spread it that. out with the foam brush. Might be a little bit easier, right? You go ahead with that. Has quite a strong smell also. Oh, Whoa, we're curling. Okay. This is coming back to me when we dabbled in Mod Podge and bookmarks that they curled up so we yes. had to leave them flat. So should I stick this to the wood? I would say yes. It says to put both. So if we have it on the back side first, okay. let's put it on the wood and then we'll put some more on the top. helped with the air bubbles, right? If you put it directly Probably, on the Probably, because the paper wanted material. to curl yeah. immediately. <laughs> Try it. 
trial and error. That's right. There's no wrong way to make a craft. That's how art is made. It says that you are to let it dry. Okay. And then you can put another thin coat on after, but 20 to 30 minutes to let it dry, and then you can put another thin coat on after. Uh, it also says that you can put on an acrylic sealer on top, and that just kind of smooths it out, like it makes the top smooth. Um, when Mod Podge dries, it is a little bit rougher to the touch, so that just kind of seals it, because this is not a sealer. So you want, if you're, if you're using something that um, you're going to end up having something wet on top or whatever, you're probably going to want to seal that first. Or you can, if you're just hanging it like this, and just, just a picture, then you probably don't have to. You can leave it the way it is. So we will let it dry. <laughs> Ours got some air bubbles in it, but yeah, looks great. It's lovely. So we'll <laughs> let it dry. We will revisit this later on, check how it's doing, maybe add a coat, and show you the progress. All right. It also says you need to wash your tools oh, immediately. Yes. So these are going to dry and get really super rock hard. So we're going to clean these up, reseal our Mod Podge container so it doesn't dry out, and we will go on to the next thing. All right, so while our Mod Podge photo is drying, we're going to move on to something else. Yes, so I think we're going to have a look now at paper mache. Awesome. So we have some paper mache books in the collection. This one is a junior nonfiction book, so you can find it in the kids section, but it has really great beginner tips on paper mache in different recipes. So generally, I think what you use was one part glue, one part water. Yes. For your paper mache. So I made a very basic paper mache balloon bowl, with this, which is something maybe a lot of you ever made in school or something. It's like the super basic paper mache project. So this is strips of newspaper and it was one part glue to one part water it was like a half cup of each mix it together really well i blew up a balloon and then you basically you just soak those and lay them over top and i let this dry overnight and it actually came out really hard and holds its shape really well so you pop the balloon and then you can decorate it use it for something <laughs> <laughs> not for cereal not food <laughs> Mod Podge is non-toxic, but we do not recommend that. <laughs> so this is a super basic example of a paper mache craft. But to get a little more technical, <laughs> we experimented with making a forever garden. So these cactuses came out quite nicely, and they are all done with paper mache. All right, so if you would like to see how we made our forever garden, watch here.
right. Well, that was great. Give that a try at home. Yeah, let us know if you make any of these crafts or if you have, maybe you're super talented and you have tried this before. We would love to see what you've made. Yes. You can find all of these books and many more paper crafts in our catalog at www.ocl.net. You can place a hold on them for curbside pickup at all 14 of our branches. Yes. All right, so Mod Podge is still drying. Forever Garden Done. looks solid. Yes. So I think now we'll move on to some beginner origami. So origami is originated from Japan and it is the Japanese art of paper folding. So I don't know how many of you out there do a lot of paper folding. Uh, it's quite a bit of fun. We've never really done it before until this. So um, we made this lovely little t-shirt and tie out of a towel and a napkin. Uh, so what we're going to do for you today is we are going to show you how to make your own t-shirt out of a whether you have like a small hand towel, or this is a dish towel, so whatever you have at home. So that design came from our napkin folding book. Yes. And they have a lot of really cool things. They have, this is how to make your fancy decorative napkins. So they have them for different occasions and just really cool things. And we were sort of overwhelmed when we first started looking at it and they were, it was actually really easy. So they have the photos of how you fold each one, which we will show you when we show you how we did the shirt and tie. on the shirt and tie. Thanks. They turned out really great. Yeah. This is our expert, beginner expert. <laughs> beginner is the key <laughs> word Origami there. napkin folder. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. So we have this tie over here is actually made out of a piece of paper. Definitely for that tie, it's not as easy to fold um, because when you wrap it around the back, it's just it's meant, this one is meant for napkin folding, but clearly it does work using paper as well. You could probably make a paper t-shirt if you wanted to. Um, we have a beautiful heart here that Shannon had made out of a napkin as well. So basically, like it's just one of these napkins. Just a regular paper napkin. Um, works really, really great if it's a square. <laughs> so the shirt is a um, rectangle tea towel, but the heart is also from the napkin folding book and it's just a paper napkin, but it works really, really great with just a regular paper one. So we have a ton of origami books in our catalog and we just have like a <laughs> very, just a couple right here. Um, so this one here is trash origami. So it is 25 paper folding projects. We're using everyday materials. So everything from like chocolate bar wrappers, 
uh, just random pieces of paper that are floating around, envelopes and stuff that you get in the mail, that sort of thing. So, and it has all your step-by-step -step instructions in there as well as some great photos to go along with all of that. That's a really cool book. It's how to use just everyday items. You got something laying around, you want to figure out how to turn it into an art project, definitely check out Trash Origami. Yes. And like Leslie mentioned, this is a very small sample of books. We have a huge origami book collection for kids and for adults. So there's every age range, every skill level in the collection as well. So I have this <laughs> giant book here and it's called the Ultimate Paper Craft in Origami Book by Paul Jackson and Angela Accord. And so it is an origami book, but in the corner here it says it's everything you need to know about paper craft skills, decorative gift wrapping, personal stationery, paper mache, designing and printing paper, origami, and fabulous objects and beautiful gifts. So this is like the master book if you want to <laughs> dive into paper crafts and try this. This is a really great one to start with. So I have bookmarked a page here. So this is a Valentine's card. So Valentine's Day coming up if you want to reuse some paper that you have at home. So it's a paper folding Valentine's card. And a lot of the origami books, if not all of them, I haven't looked in every single one of them, but they have really great large photos and step-by-step -step instructions for any visual learners out there. I have to see a picture to be able to do pretty much everything especially the origami. You get used to what they're saying. There's a lot of arrows pointing, fold here, fold there. But the, the illustrations really do help with your crafts, especially for a beginner like me. <laughs> and me. Uh, so this one here is Making Basic Origami Shapes Step-by-Step -step by Michael, Michael LaFloss. Um, so again, it's a basic beginner's book. So just learning your basic shapes, which is probably good for making anything. You have to know those basic shapes. It's a great place to start. Yes. How did our Mod Podge turn out? Well, this is our completed Mod Podge picture. Um, what did we learn <laughs> in our beginner try this Mod Podge session? So this is why we try things. This is what try this is for. Your trial and error, you're experimenting with things. It did work. Oh, it definitely the did. The photo stuck, the ink didn't run, the paper didn't rip. It stuck to the wood. If we were to do this again, we would definitely put a layer of the Mod Podge directly on the surface. So paint it um, right onto the wood. This is also just a raw piece of unfinished wood and we found it sucked up the Mod Podge quite a lot. <laughs> so you needed a fair bit and quite a few um, coats, I guess. We could definitely put some more coats on it. but. Definitely all right for a first try. That's right. Things you learn. I mean, it turned out great anyways, because, like, look at that picture. <laughs> yeah, there's always a way to try something. You get notes for next time. That's what we always like to put. So notes for next time. More layers. Definitely put it to your surface first. But definitely try out Mod Podge. It is so fun. and sort of a throwback type of craft. <laughs> All right, so expanding from our origami, our Mod Podge, and our paper mache, we have a bunch of just regular paper craft books. So, this is the Crafty Art Book by Jane Bull, and it's 50 creative projects to make perfect presents. So, this has paper crafts in it, it has beginner crocheting, and a whole bunch of stuff. This is a kid's nonfiction book, but again, it has a lot of really great fundamental skills how to do a back stitch for sewing. If you watched our previous Try This video where we were repurposing finger puppets, we dabbled in some sewing and some sewing books. But it's a really awesome beginner craft book. How to fold boxes to go along with the origami. And that is a really awesome one to start with. Or if you're just looking for a project or to keep busy. This one here, Creative Craft for kids, great for school, home, and parties. There's over a hundred projects in here, different craft things that you can do. Um, kind of everything from like there's Halloween pop-up cards to the Feed the Frog game. So there's different types of games you can make. So tons of great ideas for you to make at home with your kids and why not? Like everybody's home anyway. So make some fun stuff for your kids 
I know my kids would love it. Mm -hmm. And this one, I think, is a great way to end our playing with paper try this. It is just called Look and Make with Paper. <laughs> so <laughs> this book is all about making different crafts just with really basic materials. So there are pop-up cards in here, making a scene, uh, this orange cat, and a whole bunch of different crafts that you can do in this book. And again, it's a junior nonfiction book. Some really clear photos. This is how to make a puzzle, which you could do to make your very own jigsaw. It says you can use white glue, so you're taking your photo, gluing it to a surface, and then cutting it up. You could also Mod Podge it to your surface and tie in all these things together and then cut it up to make your very own jigsaw puzzle. So really basic materials, some really fun crafts and ideas that you can do with just with paper. Well, I think that wraps up our try this for today, but uh, keep an eye. Yeah, thanks for playing with paper with us today. We're hoping to have more try this out every month, if not more frequently. And we're going to have some special guests join us for future Try This. Like we said before, you can find all of these titles and so many more in the Oxford County Library catalog. And that's found at www.ocl.net. You can place a hold on any of those items for curbside pickup at any of our 14 branches. And you will find the hours for your branches on our website, www.ocl.net. Um, otherwise, or give your branch a call to find out what their curbside hours are. Oh, thanks for trying this with us. If you make any of these crafts, please leave them in the comments or send us a picture. We'd love to see what our creative folks are doing at home. That's right. Until next time. Bye.